The latest outdoor TV antenna I'm testing is the Antop AT800 SPS. I set it up on my roof last month and I've been repositioning it and trying out different setups to see if it can live up to the labeling on the box, which says it has a range of 85 miles. Getting UHF and VHF stations where I live in Boston isn't that hard. So I pointed the antenna north to see if I could pick up any stations in New Hampshire. Then I turned it in the opposite direction, scanned for channels to see if I could get anything in Rhode Island. I'm covering this antenna's design, how I set it up for this review and some of its unique features. Toward the end of the video, I'll dive into the antenna's performance and share some results from testing in Maine with a similar Antop antenna called the 400BV, and I'll also be sharing some results from my brother's place in Los Angeles. Where I live in Boston, the majority of broadcasters are using the UHF band. Where my brother is in Los Angeles, the majority of broadcasters are on the VHF band. So I thought taking a look at the results from these two very different environments might be helpful. I'm Jim Kimball, editor of CordCuttingReport.com, and welcome back to the channel. If you like hands-on product reviews and videos like this one, then please hit the like and subscribe button and help me grow this channel. Antop did send me this antenna free of charge, but this is not a sponsored video. If you want to read more about me and my review process, head over to CordCuttingReport.com and click on the About tab. Let's start by talking about the design of this antenna. The 800 SPS has a long rectangular design. It's a multi-directional antenna that comes with a full mounting kit that you can use to mount the antenna to either the side of your house or a pole. The body of the antenna is made with heavy duty plastic and a weather resistant finish. It includes 40 feet of coaxial cable and one of the things I like about the coax cable included in the antenna is it also has this rubberized finish and it has a rubber hood for the port that connects directly into the antenna. The weather resistant hood surrounds the coaxial port that connects directly into the antenna and that should help keep out moisture or if you're living in an area along the coastline where there's a lot of corrosive salt air having this kind of protection can really add to the life of your antenna the antenna comes with two vhf rods that screw into a pair of mounting holes in the back of the panel the poles are positioned horizontally for vhf reception the 800 sps is about two feet tall this model came out in 2020, and it's a follow-up to the Antop 400BV, and both antennas are part of the company's Big Boy series. The overall design and dimensions of both antennas are pretty much the same. The real difference is with its amplifiers. The 800 SBS has an adjustable amplifier that Antop also sells as a standalone product. SBS stands for Smart Boost System. The 400 BV uses a smaller amplifier called the Smart Pass Amplified System that you can switch on and off. Both amplifiers have built-in 4G LTE filters that can filter out 3G and 4G wireless signals, which can impact picture reception. Antop says that the 800 SPS can be used indoors and it does come with a small stand that you can place it on. But given the size and the mounting bracket that it comes with, this is really designed as an outdoor TV antenna. And as you probably know, an outdoor TV antenna is always gonna give you better reception and more channels than an indoor TV antenna. Before we get into setting up this antenna, a quick disclaimer. I am not a professional antenna installer, and I'm definitely not recommending that you get up on your roof by yourself to install an antenna. The video and what I'm about to show you is for informational purposes only to help you decide what outdoor TV antenna might be best for your home. With that out of the way, let's dive into some setup options that you can use with this antenna. There's two ways that you can mount the 800 SPS outdoors. 
You can mount this antenna on a roof peak or even just the side of an outdoor wall. The easiest way to do this is to actually remove the metal bracket from the back of the TV antenna and attach the bracket to the wall. You can easily reattach it to the mounting bracket by using the fastening bolt that's on the bottom. I mounted the antenna to my roof because I really wanted to maximize the number of potential channels that I could get. The first J-pole that I used was provided by Anton. Top. It was about 19 inches long, and after I installed it, I quickly realized that it was really too short for the kind of setup that I had in mind. The build quality of the pole was fine, it was just too short. So I ended up buying a 38 inch mass pole made by WineGuard that I found on Amazon. You'll notice here in the photos that I ended up keeping the antenna attached to the Antop pole and just sticking it inside the WineGuard pole. And the reason why I did that is because I knew I was going to be getting back up on the roof and uh, turning the antenna a lot and trying out different setups. It just made it easier for me to position the antenna from north to south. It's probably not a setup you want to do if you've figured out what direction you need to face your antenna and you're going to fix it permanently in one spot. The metal bracket and mounting hardware makes it very easy to connect the antenna to a pole. I was able to get it all together in under five minutes. My roof peak is is around 30 feet from the ground and so I had plenty of cable to drop down to my garage where I had set up a Tableau Quad which is an over-the-air DVR that makes your channels available across your home Wi-Fi network. That wasn't the only DVR I tried. I also connected the Air TV 2 which integrates over-the-air channels into a Sling TV account. I also hooked up my Fire TV Recast and tried it with Fire TV. I brought in an old 1080p television and hooked it up in my garage. And the reason why I did this is I wanted to make sure that the different TV tuners and the TV itself was all giving me a consistent experience in the same channel lineup as I moved my antenna around and scanned for channels. What I found was all of these tuners and the television performed well and I got a consistent number of channels with each device. And by the way, in my circumstances, I was better off not using the amplifier given where I'm located. But what you're gonna wanna do if you do buy this antenna is you're gonna wanna do a channel scan without the amplifier and with the amplifier to see how it performs in your area. So as I mentioned earlier, Antop says that the 800 SBS has a range of 85 miles, but in my experience, I think a range between 40 to 55 miles is a little more realistic in a lot of circumstances. And that's pretty much what I found as I tested it here in Boston. I used a, a number of mapping websites to determine what channels I should have been able to get. And depending on which site you go to, the results that you get can vary. The site that's the most comprehensive, in my opinion, is rabbitears.info. The rabbit ear site was especially helpful with identifying channels that the antenna was picking up that were technically in neighboring television markets such as Rhode Island and New Hampshire. So for example, here's my Tableau channel lineup. I'm able to get channel 6, which is the ABC affiliate out of Rhode Island. Here on my channel list, I can see that the tower is 32.7 miles away, and it's actually rated uh, with a poor field strength. So this is a channel that should be kind of challenging or a little more difficult to get, but as you can see from the picture quality, it's pretty clear, there's no pixelation, and I haven't had any trouble watching this channel. Channel 10 is a local NBC affiliate out of Providence that's rated with only a fair field strength. It has a transmitter distance of about 33 miles, and again, it looks just as clear as the Boston channel that's nearby. So while I was looking over the new channels that I was getting with this antenna, I was trying to identify a station that was appearing as channel 17. It's a independent station licensed out of Westmoreland, New Hampshire. But after doing a little digging into the rabbit ear site, I was able to determine that there's a transmitter tower that's about 10 miles away. And if you see in the lower uh, left-hand corner, 
corner here with my Google Earth map, here's where the transmitter tower is in downtown Boston. The reason why I mention this, you want to be aware of that the community of the license for a TV station may not necessarily be where a local transmitter is located. So jumping back to rabbit ears for a second, I was able to hit the map button and that gave me a pretty nice map of where the transmitter was and of course where I am. So the 800 SBS picked up 62 channels, including sub channels around where I lived in Boston, including ABC and NBC affiliates in the Providence market. Overall, I was very satisfied with its performance. When I turned the antenna north, I was trying to get a local ABC affiliate out of Manchester, New Hampshire, that's about 50 miles away, that operates on the VHF band. I wasn't able to pick up that station. One thing to note is that the terrain between my house and that tower in New Hampshire is pretty hilly. There's a lot of trees and potential obstacles that could prevent me from getting that station. It's also worth noting that Rabbit Ears rated it as having a bad field strength from where I live. But overall, I was really pleased with the channels that I was able to get by facing the antenna south. So let's talk about the Los Angeles results. Shortly before I started this review, my brother emailed me and he was asking me about what kind of outdoor TV antenna he should buy. He had used an indoor TV antenna for a while, had gotten about a dozen channels, then tried an outdoor TV antenna that he didn't have on the roof, he just had it out on his deck, and that didn't really move the needle for him. He lives near the beach, and the salt air is really known for corroding anything that's metallic that you leave outside for a while. I recommended the 400 BV for a couple of reasons. I knew the majority of broadcasters in his market were still operating on the VHF band. Most of the towers that mattered to him were about 30 to 35 miles away on Mount Wilson, and that rubberized hood at the one end of the coaxial cable would probably protect his connection from that corrosive salt air. Here's a picture of a setup that he sent me. Him and his son just used materials around the house. They had a PVC pipe, a five gallon bucket that they used to make their own little post that they could anchor with the bucket. So their channel lineup jumped quite a bit. The local Fox and ABC stations are on the VHF band out there. NBC and PBS are on UHF. Once they got everything set up, they got about 175 channels between their main channels and sub-channels. If you want to run that through rabbit ears, we're talking about channels 2 through 64. The most important channels for them are the ones that gave them local news and sports, such as NFL games on the weekend. I was curious about whether they could get anything beyond the 30 or 40 mile mark, so I asked my nephew about whether he could get any reception from a local PBS station that's located out in San Bernardino. That tower is about 64 miles away. He said they weren't able to get that station, even though the antenna was generally pointed toward that direction. But despite that, they still had a dramatic improvement in the number of channels that they could get, mainly because of those VHF elements on the antenna and by placing the antenna on the roof. When I tested the 400 BV a few years ago in southern Maine, I got about 30 channels and most of those were out of the Portland, Maine area. When I pointed the antenna west though, I was able to get one New Hampshire station that was located in the Concord, New Hampshire area and that was located a little over 53 miles away. The channel itself wasn't anything great to watch. It certainly demonstrated that the antenna was capable of receiving signals from towers that were 50 miles away. So based on all my testing to date, I think the 800 SBS is a good buy. It's something you should consider if you're looking for an outdoor TV antenna. You need something that's multi-directional that can get both UHF and VHF signals. Of course, you're always gonna have to take into consideration your local terrain, any potential obstacles between your antenna and broadcast towers. But I hope this video was helpful and gave you some general guidance as you start to look around at different outdoor TV antennas. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And if you already have a outdoor TV antenna set up, I'd love to know 
what you're using and how long you've been using it for. Also, if you found this video helpful, I hope you'll share it, give it a like, subscribe to the channel. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.